Good morning. Uh, of course, today is Father's Day, and uh, if you have any memories of your father, or if your father's still living, uh, you know what importance there is in having a father, and what a good father should look like, hopefully. Um, some people may not have had a good father, or may have had an absentee father, unfortunately. Um, but you do know the importance of a father or a father figure in the household, in the community, um, just in your life in general. Uh, my father has actually been passed for 12 years now, almost 13 years. Um, well, almost 12 years. I, don't know, I can't add anymore. <laughs> but I've had the good fortune of having great father figures in my life since then. Mr. Bobby, Mr. Carl's been a great father figure. Mr. Russ, uh, lots of others. I haven't had my grandfather since 2002. Uh, he was my last grandparent to pass away. Uh, but again, I've had Mr. Bobby and I have Mr. Um, had lots of people help me out along the way, and I'm very appreciative of it. Uh, the main thing with the scripture I picked today is because it shows us not what just a good father should look like, but what a godly father should look like. Because it shows us what God looks like. And if we're going to epitomize any father, it should be the father, shouldn't it? If, if we're going to lift up any father, it should be the father. And we should expect our fathers to look like that. And if we are fathers, we should strive to look like that. I know it may be an impossible task, but it should be what we're looking for. It should be what we're working towards. And I pray that I do try. I know that I'm going to make mistakes. I'm human. I know we all are. We're human. But it should be the model we look towards, not anybody here on us. And I just want to go through this and read it and maybe talk about it a little bit. Um, God pointed me to this scripture, and it didn't give me much else. So I'm hoping and praying that he gives me something that we read along. And starting in verse 1 of Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. I do want to pause there. Benefits. His benefits. It means the good that comes from him. The good that he puts on us. The things that he gives us. And that's what we're going to see in this list coming up. And it's something that isn't impossible for us to imitate, but it may be hard. In verse 3, it says, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That the Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we are made, and he remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and 
and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, abundant to his spoke, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You take a look at that long list of things, and it seems overabundant for any of us in what we could do or what we can do. We think that it's an impossible task, but when you really just break it down to what it's saying about God, it's what we should strive to do at every moment. From the very beginning, he forgives all our iniquity. He forgives our iniquity. He forgives our shortcomings. He forgives our failings. He forgives where we have sinned and where we have turned away from him. I don't know how many of us have been prodigal sons. If we remember that story, the son who went off, took his inheritance, and did his own thing and regretted it and came back, how the father ran to him. It's what God does for each of us. It's what we do for our own children. When they mess up, we don't hold it against them. We forgive them. It says he heals all your diseases. I'm sorry. I'm not a doctor. I know we got one in here. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I can't heal diseases. But I can comfort when my kids are sick. I can offer medicine to them. I can take care of them. And that's what we should do as a very care for our children. It says redeem your life from the pit. The pit is another word for Sheol. It's another word for the place of the dead. It's another word for despair, desperation, for being lost. How many of you have ever felt that way before and it was your father's words that brought you comfort, that lifted you up out of that way, that helped you to grow, to become stronger? Oh, Dad, I messed up now. And he gave you some wise words of comfort to carry you through it. I can remember when Addison was still a baby and was in the, she was in the hospital, and I thought God was doing everything he could against me. And my father, who had never really been a church-going man and never really been what I would have called a righteous man, come to me with the simplest words and said, God's not doing this to you, son. He's doing it for you. He will make you strong. I remember those words because they come from a place of love and comfort. He lifted me up from a pit of despair and helped me through that. It says, crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Children, listen, has your father ever done something for you that made absolutely no sense? That you have screwed up, you have messed up, you have done so much wrong, and he still shows you love and mercy at that moment. I know mine did, my grandfather did, my surrogate grandfather had more than I deserve, I promise you that. But more so, God has. Christ Jesus. None of us deserve heaven. None of us deserve the forgiveness that he gave us. He gave it to us. He crowned us with it. He made us princes among angels through Jesus' blood if we accept him. Something that none of us deserve. He satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like eagles. That is a long way of saying he gives you a place to rest. A safe place where the worries and the troubles of the world cannot 
No matter what was going on in my life, I knew I could always go home and stay. And I pray I offer that same thing in my church. That no matter what's going on, you come to me. We'll pray together. We'll work through it together. We'll, we'll accomplish that together. And you can get rest and renew your strength. Go back out and face that world when you need to. So he works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. I know there's other scripture that says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's exactly what this is saying that no matter what foes come against you, no matter what the enemy brings against you, you have God to speak on your behalf. You have God to act on your behalf. You do not have to take vengeance in your own hands. He will vindicate you. He will seek out justice for you. He talks about his way, uh, how he made known his ways to Moses. He gave us rules to follow commandments. How many fathers have done that? You may not like them, but they were for your own good, for your own growth. When you look back on them as an adult, you realize what, what they were, what they meant. That they were to keep you on the right path. It says he's merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's a nice way of saying he's got patience for our area and our area. I know my daddy had to have. He had two boys. And boys are a lot worse than girls. I can promise you that. I'd be in trouble if I had boys. That don't mean girls are easy. I've got to have patience. Especially when they bring boys home. says he will not always accuse nor will he keep his anger forever. How many of y'all's daddy ever got mad at you? I told you yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't forever. It wasn't forever. God's anger is not forever. That's why he sent his son. That's why Jesus died on that cross for us. God's anger is not sin. He sent a, a Savior to bring us home to Him. He says He does not deal with our with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Again, He gave us this. We deserve the hell that we put ourselves through. We deserve to go to hell because that's where we were going on our own anyway. He is the one who threw the life raft out for us. He is the one who strung the rope out for us and grasped the hope of us in Jesus Christ. Because he does not want to deal with us according to our sins or repay us for our iniquities. That he wants to lift us up from that path and show us grace and mercy. Says, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, he, so far he removes our transgressions from us. He removes our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. You notice that doesn't say from the north to the south. If you've ever looked at a globe, you can reach the north, you can reach the south. You cannot reach the east or the west keep going east, you're going to keep going east, you're going to keep going east, you're going to keep going. And if you go west, the same thing shall never be. How far he has removed our sins from us. We give our life to Jesus Christ 
we are removed as far as the east is from the west. How many of y'all have ever had children look at you and go, I love you this big? And how big she does not want. He spread his arms out. Though the Father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. He remembered the creation, Lord. He formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed his life into him. Everything else he just spoke it into existence. Man, us, human beings, he breathed. His life into them. He gave a part of himself physically to us. And he remembers that. Because of that, he has compassion on us. He has love for us. He has patience for us. And he knows that because we're mortal, we're going to pass away. And because we are fragile, we're going to die. And just like that, it's in the blink of an eye. But by comparison, his love is forever. From everlasting to everlasting. Jesus tells us in Revelation that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is from creation ends of the earth. He said it all comes apart and it comes back again. He has been that before. Every step of the way. He has never walked away. He has never walked away. simply we're keep, keep and remember his commandments and honor his covenant with us. We're told in the New Testament that he's created a new covenant through Jesus Christ. And the commandments are so much simpler now than they were then. The commandments then were just this whole list. Everybody thinks about the Ten Commandments, but it's so much more. The Jews had over 600 commandments, almost 700. Jesus said you can't follow all of those. You couldn't follow ten. You couldn't follow one. Don't eat from the tree. But I'm going to give you two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Two simple commandments. When we don't love each other with lies and comfort, we love each other with hard truth. We love each other through everything. We work to save one another from a destiny to hell. Offering the truth of salvation through Jesus Christ. Offering the gospel to each person that we can. Offering a helping hand to those who need it. Showing compassion to one another. Because I'm not just the father of my two daughters. But if my brother and my brother-in-law aren't around, I can be a father to their children too. And I would expect them to be a father to my children when I'm not there. My friends are around, I can be father to them and their children. Because God is a father to each and every one of us. We have a duty to take care of one another. To love one another show grace and compassion to one another. All of this list isn't just a list of how fathers should act, but how every one of us should be acting. We should be imitating God and serving Him through Jesus Christ. It's not as hard and complicated as it looks once you put it to practice. Time to build it up. Nobody's 
expecting you to do it all at once, right, the first time. Yet we are human, we make mistakes. But the more we do it, the more we put it to practice, the more we try it out and work toward it, the better we do it. No same practice makes perfect, and I think that's a lie. more like him instead of worrying about whether or not we're like each other. No matter what we pray, God bless you, my son. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to share this message on this Father's Day with so many people. That they might hear your message, hear your word, take it to heart that you are the Father that we should strive to be like, that you are the one we should model our lives after, so that our children can model their lives after as well. Lord, I ask that you carry this message out amongst every one of us so that we can have it on our minds and on our hearts, so that we can better ourselves through you with your strength so that we can understand that we may not be able to do it on our own, but with you we can. That when we give our lives to you, we honor you and lift your son's name above all others. And through Jesus, we will become who we need to be. Lord, I ask that you touch each and every one of our hearts and minds as we go from here and help us to have a blessed and wonderful day, Lord. Be with each and every person is aching and is out. Touch their hearts and their minds so that they can know that your presence is there and that they can turn their lives towards you. I pray all this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.